Okay, welcome accounting students to my lecture on journal entries. And previously we've walked you through an introduction to financial accounting, how to get a good start. Uh, we've taken you through the trial balance and creating financial statements. And now we're going to take a one step back and look at analyzing transactions, getting them onto the books. Some accounting classes have really kind of gotten away from this education model where you, you learn the practical transactional work of, of doing bookkeeping. And they do this because most people are not going to become accountants and we have software that does all of this. Unfortunately, if you don't get a grasp of how this stuff all flows together and how it all fits together, it's difficult to analyze transactions. And what we really want out of, of accounting students and finance students is the ability to think about a transaction and think about its impact on the financial statements. So if you're in a course that, that doesn't have you do all this practical stuff, this still, mo st still may be worthwhile to go through and do. Um, but if you are in a, a course that, that does the practical journal entries, this is going to be very valuable to you. So let's take a look at what we've got here. And I have loaded up on Google Documents all of these, uh, uh, these spreadsheets. Actually, this is one workbook with a bunch of different tabs. Uh, I've got it in, actually loaded up in Excel here because the, the Google Docs works kind of slowly when I have Camtasia running. So. Let's just talk theoretically about how we record transactions. We've already looked at the account listing for Lizzie Incorporated and how that flows into a trial balance, how we go from a trial balance into the income statement, statement of return earnings, and so on. So what we're going to do now is we're taking a step back and we're looking at getting these things on the books. Now, generally, we're only going to use software from now on to do this. This is kind of the old school, old fashioned method. And if you think of QuickBooks, this is what goes on under the covers in QuickBooks. So we're going to work with two documents that you haven't been introduced to before, the general journal and the general ledger. The general journal is where transactions get into the books. This is the entry point. If it doesn't go into the general journal, it doesn't make it into the books. This is where we do our journal entries. And if all of our journal entries, the debits have to equal the credits. We're using the same information that we used in the, uh, the financial statements presentation or preparation video. So let's jump right in. And uh, what I would like for you to do to really get uh, good use of this video is get some green bar paper and create a general journal and a general ledger. You're going to be able to download the spreadsheet, but I want you to physically write this stuff out and practice writing it out change the journal entries a little bit, see the effect of how that rolls through into the financial statements. The only way to get good at this stuff is to practice it. Just watching a video isn't going to do it for you. You need the practical work. So let's start with looking at our very first journal entry. This is a new company, Lizzie Incorporated. Uh, journal entry one on January 1st of 09. Lizzie Inc. sells some stock for $100. So one of the things that you have to get used to in accounting one is when you talk about selling or uh, uh, you know paying something, we pay with cash. And we sold this for cash. It doesn't say sales on account, so we received cash. So there's Lizzie selling her common stock for $100, debit cash for $100, credit common stock for $100. Now immediately after writing this journal entry, I want you to go over to the general ledger and you see I've got a general ledger set up here for Lizzie Incorporated. Here's all the different accounts that we're going to be using. And what I would like for you to do is post the first journal entry. So here's the f journal entry number one. And I'm going back to the general journal real quick. See journal entry number one on January 1st. We're posting that on the general ledger. Here's journal entry number one on January 1. There's a debit for $100. Over here on common stock, there's a credit for $100. Now we know that our debits equal our credits after this journal entry. We could actually prepare a trial balance at this point and prepare financial statements. There's not a whole lot going on, but that's where all of these transactions come from. Every transaction is going to affect the financial statements. And we're not going to talk about each one of these because you're going to be able to go through and, and look at these in Google Docs. Uh, but let's, uh, let, let's carry on. On June 30th, Lizzie Inc. does her second transaction. She purchases some inventory on account. And when I say on account, in accounting one, this is a very big deal. When we talk about it on account, it's, we're 
either talking about accounts receivable or accounts payable. So she purchased something. She received inventory. That's an asset. We're increasing the asset with a debit, and we're crediting accounts payable, increasing that by crediting it. Both of those get posted through to the general ledger. There's inventory, the debit, the journal entry number two on June 30th. And over here in accounts payable, journal entry number two, June 30th, 18839 Again, we could prepare a trial balance at this point and prepare all of our financial statements because our debits equal our credits. Uh, third transaction for Lizzie. She sold a two-year note. So there's notes payable. That's a liability. Liabilities are credits. We want to increase the credits or increase the liability. So we credit it for $20,000 and we're increasing Lizzie's cash by $20,000. Again, over here on the general ledger, there's journal entry number three, $20,000, increasing cash. And let's go over to notes payable, journal entry number three, $20,000. Now you notice I've got the general ledger set up so it's, it is calculating a running total. The notes payable account, we added that, it now has $20,000 in it. And notes payable is a liability, so the natural balance is a credit. We would expect to see that it has a credit balance. And here it's increased by $20,000. The general ledger tells us just the account balance, all the total of the debits and credits. And here on cash at the end of the year, we see we have a, a debit balance of $14,000 after all of the transactions. We could total these up after any time, after any transaction. We could total them up after March. If we total them up after this March transaction, we would have $20,100 in cash. This is the purpose of the ledger is only to give us the, the summary information. That's why we need to label our journal entries so we can find, okay, well this transaction was from Jan for the, you know, transaction number one from January 1st, and I can go back and find it on the ledger or the journal exactly what happened. Oh, okay, that's when we sold common stock. Or journal entry number three, that's when we sold our notes payable. You should be able to, in this course, have a very, very easy time with if I want to increase an asset, assets are debits, so I want to debit the account. If I want to decrease the assets, I'm going to credit the account, which is going to reduce a, a debit balance account. Uh, you shouldn't be logicking your way through these things. You need to make sure that you've got your memorization of the dividends, expenses, assets, liabilities, and owner's equity all taken care of. Uh, this should be committed to memory. You shouldn't have to be hardly even thinking about it. If you haven't yet memorized this, please go to the YouTube video on Introduction of Financial Accounting uh, and make sure that you practice this memorization. I've got all of the journal entries, the first nine journal entries recorded, and those have all been posted to the general ledger. And this is the same list of accounts that we had from the financial statements preparation video. Notice we've broken out, we've detailed the list of accounts into their account types. There's only six account types we're going to deal with. And that, as long as you work on accounting, there's only six account types. And then we have the natural balance, debit or credit. And that carries through to the trial balance and each of the financial statements, finan income statements, statement return earnings, and balance sheet. We have a separate video on the statement of cash flows because that's usually something you do at the very end of, of accounting one. Uh, what I would like for you to be able to do with this is analyze journal entries, analyze transactions, be able to record a journal entry, make sure that your debits equal your credits, keep good form, and understand how these transactions affect the three financial statements that, that we're dealing with in, in this worksheet here. So thank you very much. Uh, in order to get good at this, you're going to have to practice, practice, practice. Please don't just look at this on the, uh, uh, the Excel workbook or the Google Docs workbook. Make sure and get out your green bar paper. Practice writing down these journal entries. Uh, watch how they flow through to the financial statements. If you do this two or three times, you're going to find it, it, it's extremely simple for you. So good luck. I want you to get an A in accounting one. And, uh, and thereafter become a great CPA.